third reason we want to talk about is this. That this isn't just physical, but it's spiritual as well. Um, especially those of you who were with us during the Redemption series. You know, we, we talked about how in the, in the battle between good and evil, like good has already won because of Jesus. He died on the cross for your sin, for my sin, the sins that we did commit, the sins that we're committing in the future. Like, it's over. The battle's over. But here we are in this in-between time where God's kingdom is here, but it's not complete. And so the evil one, Satan, in this time, even though you're redeemed and, and you have a relationship with God and your eternity is taken care of, care of, he hates the fact that you have the ability to reflect God. You have the ability to reflect God's glory. And he will try to drag you down. And one of the ways that he can drag followers of Christ down is to get them involved in sin that can keep them in bondage, that can keep them in unhealthy relationships with others, that can keep them with so much guilt and remorse and regret that they're afraid to approach their Heavenly Father. And so there's a spiritual battle going on here. So if we completely control the fact that you guys were great daters and you guys, you know, you, you guys were appropriate in how you physically treated one another and stuff like that, that's great. We're happy about that. But we really want you guys to understand that it's deeper than that, that really what we're doing, it's a spiritual battle. Because we want you guys to understand why it is that you're living like this, and that's to glorify God. And we don't want you guys um, to get in, in, in a situation where you're feeling bogged down by sin that we can um, avoid, although it is not easy. Does that make sense? Okay, so we want to make sure um, that we can clear up some confusion. We want to make sure that you guys know about the decisions that you're making so that you don't have consequences down the road that you don't want and that you can have rewards and, and use the gift that God has given you appropriately. And then we, we also want to make you aware of the physical, I mean the spiritual battle that's going on as well. Um, Jason, I wanted to ask you real quick if you can jump up here and tell us what we're doing each week. We, we're going to be talking about this for five weeks. This five is week weeks. number one. Both. So four weeks after this, Jason wrote out kind of the curriculum. Here's what we have going on. Everybody pay attention. Yeah. Next week, Tim's going to be talking about it. He just came back and he, he just got married. And uh, he's going to be talking. Hey, let's play a game called Let's Not Do That. Thanks, uh, <laughs> You're my brother. You have to love Okay. Uh, next week, Timmy's going to be talking about what? Like, design. <coughs> What is this stuff designed for? How are we supposed to love each other? How are we supposed to be in this relationship with one another? Then you guys go away on your uh, ski break. Then you guys come back. Jim Birchfield will be going to be talking to the guys. Jessica will be talking to the girls. So we're going to split off by gender and just talk about what does it mean to be a man of God? What does it mean to be a woman of God? You know, gender kind of deals. Then I'm going to talk the next week about boundaries. You know, you guys going into dating relationships. Maybe you're in dating relationships. Maybe you're, you know, high-fiving each other. Maybe how far is too far? <laughs> Maybe how you know? Should I high five? You know, on the first date? You know, uh, you, know, I, you know? I say no. You know, that's where I draw the match. <laughs> and then we're gonna end it with the whole thing. And either Dave's gonna do it or I'm gonna do it. We're gonna talk about you know, adultery in the Bible isn't only about you know giving you know your sexuality to somebody else. Adultery in the Bible is actually talking about like, giving your whole soul to somebody else. And when, when, in the Old Testament, when they talk about adultery, most of the time they're not talking about between man and man and woman. They're actually talking about man, woman, and other gods. Like, we're we're going to end this thing that we're supposed to be worshiping God like with our whole souls. You know? And what does that look like? Uh, what does it look like when we're single? How are we supposed to worship God? You know? with our sexuality when we're not supposed to be having sex with Cool. Yeah. Amen. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, um. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh. All right, fine. Question. She has a question, Jay. <laughs> hey, one of my favorite verses, and you guys have heard me repeat this, is John 10.10. 10. <laughs> And I think it's very applicable for this for this uh, series. And it says this that the the thief the thief very funny guys. It says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
But Jesus says, but I have come to give you life and to give you, give you life more abundantly. I think that rings true for this, path, for this series so much. That the thief, the evil one, Satan, he would love to steal, to kill, and destroy what God has, wants to give you. He would love it. Because it would keep you in bondage. You would have, you know, it mess up relationships with people around you. It mess up relationship between you and God. It'd keep you full of regret and remorse. But Jesus, I think what he would say, hey, but I've, I've got bigger and better plans. I want to give you life. I want you to experience everything that I have for you. Everything that I created this to be for you. And I'm going to give it to you, and I want to give it to you abundantly. So I hope that you guys will, will join us for the next five weeks. I want you guys to make a decision right now. Here's the first, first one. We talked about all, here's the first option. We talked about all the different input and messages that you guys are receiving. It's all the time, okay? One option is for you guys to just say, hey, that's what I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do what the world tells me to do. I'm gonna go after the media messages, they're true, I think that's the best way. And if that's, if that's where you're at, the easy thing is you don't have to do anything. Because with the way that our culture goes, you're gonna be heading down that trail anyways. If you're getting 14,000 messages about sex, dating, and relationships from TV every year, you don't have to do a lot. You're just going to have to go with that. And that doesn't count movies and, and music and stuff. You're going to be shaped by our culture. That's option number one. Option number two is for those of you who said, hey, I really want to investigate what God's plan is for me in dating, love, relationships, and stuff like that. If that's the option, I simply want you to continue to show up for the next four weeks. Our leaders are going to do a good job of getting you some great information. I'm sure you will hear a number one, a number of our stories and stories of people um, who we come into contact with. And we'll try to make it as beneficial for you guys as we possibly can. All right. So number one, if you don't want to do anything, that's that's fine. It's your decision. We hope that that's not what you choose. But if it is, um, you can choose that, and, and you don't have to do anything because you're going to be shaped by the culture in which we live. Okay, and if you think about the movies, if you think about TV, if you think about the music, like it's not, it's not very hard to figure out what they're telling you. But if you want to say, hey, I want to kind of go against culture a little bit, actually quite a bit, <laughs> I want to go the exact other way, then keep coming the next four weeks. Um, there's some stuff that we think would be beneficial. And we, we literally want to tell you what God's word has for you. And guys, he loves you so much that he's not going to do something that isn't in your best interest at all. When he looks at you, when, when he looks at all of you guys, he would never do anything. I mean, the verse that I read from Jeremiah, um, that he knows the plans that he has for you. And then to prosper you, they're not to harm you, they're to give you a hope and a future. You're not going to find that with, with what you're learning elsewhere. 